I'm excited. We now begin our study of trigonometry. In an effort I'm excited. We now begin our study of trigonometry. In an effort to do that, we're going to talk about some definitions, particularly as we've referred to angles. So um, we're going to spend a, a bit of time to do that because we are going to draw right triangles in the rectangular coordinate system here. And we are going to draw angles an angle by generating, it's going to be generated by rotating a ray about a fixed endpoint from an initial position to a terminal position. That's the important part. From an initial position to a terminal position. So often in trigonometry when we start stu studying the trig functions and their signs, plus and minus signs. We speak about an angle rotating, the ray rotates in a counterclockwise rotation and we might define, I'm just going to draw an angle here, I'm going to draw this angle right here which may be approximately 42 degrees and the initial position that I started from was the x-axis. So here's the initial position. And the terminal side, or the stopping point of that angle, is right over here. Terminal side. And the size of that angle is a positive 42 degrees. So um, we're going to be working with both positive and negative angles. So I just need you to know that if I drew the rectangular coordinate system and put the x-axis here and the y-axis here and decided to draw an angle from the x-axis and this was its terminal side, I might describe that angle, I might describe that angle as, let's say it's 37 degrees, as a negative 37 degrees because from its initial side to its terminal side, I rotated in a clockwise direction. So clockwise direction means negative angle. Counterclockwise direction means positive angle. Real important and almost counterintuitive, um, you know, because in digital or analog clocks, um, clockwise is, would seem like it should be positive, not negative. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to describe angles starting with the x-axis as the starting point and either go counterclockwise or clockwise to describe their size. There are many symbols used to designate an angle. So, for example, if I wanted to call, I'm not going to bother with the rectangular coordinate system, but let's say I wanted to call this angle, let's say it's 40 degrees, I might name it by a Greek letter. This letter is called theta. So that's how you draw the symbol theta. We're often going to use the letter theta in our trigonometry work to describe this, an angle. So an angle always has to have a name. It may even have a capital letter A, capital letter B, capital letter C. But theta is very common. So is the capital letter beta. We use the Greek alphabet. We do that because we run out of our own alphabet. We don't have enough letters. Uh, 26 letters, lowercase and uppercase, to do all of our sciences. So we have to refer or we have to choose, and we chose the Greek system. Here's alpha. This is a lowercase alpha. In order to um, have enough symbols to be representative. Again, please remember that a positive angle is counterclockwise. I'm going to write that down again very very important for the rest of our time together and a negative angle rotates in a clockwise direction. So our next piece is to just ask you to find equivalent coterminal means equivalent angles. The same size but may be described in a different way. For example, the fraction 2 fourths can be reduced to the fraction 1 half. They're the same size, but they can be represented in two different ways. So I would like you to understand how to find a coterminal angle to a 73 degree angle. So I'm going to draw a picture. It's going to be relatively small. So here's the um, first quadrant. 
right here. Here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. So a 73 degree angle would be very close to the y-axis because that's 90 degrees. So I'm going to, to describe this as 73 degrees, positive, counterclockwise, remember. So the negative version of this angle, something that's equivalent to it, would be a clockwise rotation to get around to that side. So from the initial side all the way around. Well, there's 360 degrees around the, the four quadrants. So if I just took the number 360 and subtracted 73 from it, I would get um, the number 287. I'm just going to check that for you. Yeah. 287. This red angle would be written as a negative 287 degrees because I've rotated clockwise from the x-axis to the terminal side of that 73 degree angle. Likewise, if I wanted, uh, I'm asking you for two coterminal angles, I'd like a negative one and a positive one, I can get another equivalent to 73 degrees by wrapping around the circle again, another 360 degrees. So I can take 360 and add 73 and get 433 degrees. So I'm going to do this in color. So 73 degrees is equivalent to a negative 287 degrees is equivalent to 433 degrees, and these are all ways to name a 73 degree angle. Let's do one more before we, we get to the next one. So let's go 126 degrees. So a quick sketch. 126 degrees is right here in the second quadrant. 126 degrees. So I need you to take 360 minus 126 to get the red value. So again, look at how I did this right here. 360 and take away the 126. I haven't done this in advance, so 10 minus 6 is 4, 3, hopefully I'm doing this right, 234 degrees. The other one is to take 360 and add 126 degrees. So 486 degrees. So um, again, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the negative sign on this one. This is a negative 234 degrees because it's clockwise. So 126 degrees is equal to a negative 234 degrees is equal to 486 degrees. And like a fraction where we have to sometimes call two-fourths one-half, I would need to do that in this case. All right, um, maybe um, hit pause so you can record these numbers because I'm going to erase them right now. All right, so I want to do the next problem and I just need a little bit more space so I'm going to do it up above. So I think I'll just leave this over here, just kind of take my eraser through it real quick and see if I can there we go. All right, 153 degrees, 47 minutes. So that's close to 180 degrees, which is in the second quadrant. So that's somewhere over here. That's where 153 degrees, 47 minutes is. Now, I've been taking 360 and subtracting 153 degrees, 47 minutes. I'm going to have to borrow to do that. And then once I do that, I'll put the negative sign on this, and it looks like it's going to be about 200, because it's a 90, 180, about 200 degrees. Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to change this to 359 degrees. In every one degree, there are 60 minutes. It's just like the clock in time. 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60, and this is our minute symbol in, uh, in our study of geometry and, and trigonometry and angles. Sometimes angles are described by degrees, minutes, and they can even go to seconds. So if I want to write the coterminal angle to this in degrees and minutes, I can't think of this 360 degrees. I have to think of it as 359 degrees and 60 minutes. Now, when I subtract those, 60 minus 47 is 10 minus 7 is 3, 5 minus 4 is 1. So I've got 13 minutes. 
9 minus 3 is 6, 5 minus 5 is 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. I have 206 degrees, 13 minutes. Remember, it's negative. I'm going to do this in red right here. It's negative because it's this clockwise rotation. The other answer was to take 360 degrees and add 153 degrees to it. So I don't have to do any borrowing when I add. I can just add these numbers. Looks like that's 513 degrees, 47. Um, this was supposed to be a minute symbol. So that's an equivalent because I've gone around the circle one added time on top of the 153 I added 360 to it. So again, this, this, and this are all equivalent angles. We'll come back and